Hello, good morning. Welcome to Oral Surgery Journal Club. This will hopefully be a recurring weekly literature review where we discuss some relatively recent and interesting literature that pertains to the oral surgery world. Um, for whatever reason, I hope you stumbled upon this page. I hope you'll like it. I hope you'll continue sh coming back. Um, the goal is to make this uh, as easy as possible to consume literature while you're driving or doing something else. I will have the literature up on the screen if you're able to follow along, but if you're just driving, obviously be safe. All right, so this first article that we're going to discuss today is 5-fluorouracil and how it's used to treat odontogenic keratocyst. Um, this paper was from April of 2021 and is published in JOMS. And it's an interesting article. It's relatively new and I believe, you know, people are starting to hear more about it, but it may be fairly new to some people depending on where you train in the country. Um, the paper comes from Toronto, Dr. Marco Caminiti along with Dr. Grace Bradley. And this is actually their second paper on this topic. They published back in 2017. At that time, they had a smaller N. I think they had 11 patients. And now a few years later, they're up to 70 patients. So it's a little stronger, um, a little stronger in terms of their N size. And they're publishing additional data. Uh, I should mention that the 2017 paper included Dr. David Lamb, who introduced this concept to us in New York, and slowly word is spreading about 5-fluorouracil and how effective it is. All right, so let's go, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis and then we'll go into the background discussion and some points and always at the, always appreciate comments and feedback at the end, of course. Um, so brief synopsis. So 5-fluorouracil is an anti-metabolite drug. It's used to decrease the recurrence rates of OKC. They looked at, they did a retrospective cohort study. They looked at 70 patients, approximately 35 in each group from Toronto that were treated in the past 10 years, all patients who had biopsy proven OKC. About half the patients were treated with modified coronary solution and half the patients were treated with 5-FU. And we were looking for what was the difference in recurrence and they were post-opt um, for about 22 months and monitored with serial radiographs. And the recurrence rates were found to be zero in the, mod in the 5-FU group and about 25% recurrence in the modified coronary solution. Um, some background, OKC is a benign cyst. Um, it has very, it's locally aggressive. It has a high recurrence rate, somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 50%. The thought is it's due to epithelial remnants. It has very thin cystic lining. And as you're nucleating the cystic lesion, you can leave behind some daughter cysts, they're called, and these daughter cysts will lead to recurrence. And so different adjunctive therapies historically were developed to try to decrease the recurrence. Um, things like coronoid solution, which you may have used, um, or modified coronary solution. The difference is the key ingredient of chloroform. So cor coronary solution is a fixative agent. It causes chemical necrosis, uh, just tangential, but interesting point. Um, it penetrates bone 1.5 millimeters. There was some concern about coronary solution being neurotoxic if it's directly on the nerve. Therefore, based on studies with like rabbits, we know to leave the coronary solution only for three minutes or less, and then we irrigate it out. That's that's to protect the nerve and, and, and any nerve injury that would result from continued chemical necrosis. Um, and then modified coronary solution is everything the same. It has the alcohol, the ferric salt, ferric chloride, and acetic acid. The only thing it's missing is the chloroform, and the chloroform is carcinogenic, and some hospitals don't carry it. Um, the modified coronary solution is easier to come by, but of course it's less effective. Um, there are other some adjunctive therapies. You could just do a nucleation keratage. You could do a nucleation keratage with a mechanical peripheral ostectomy instead of using anything chemical, any other adjunctives. You could do cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen. That has also been shown to decrease recurrence. Um, all of these have their pitfalls, of course, when it comes to coronoids. It's like I mentioned, chloroform is not easy to come by, plus it's carcinogenic. When it comes to cryotherapy, the delivery is quite difficult. It has to be kept in a specialized thermos. You have to drape the patient to protect them from getting any burns. Um, and you can also get pathologic fractures. So cryotherapy is not the easiest to use. Coronoids is hard to come by. And then recently, 5FU came on the scene and it's certainly easier to use. And now the literature seems to show it has a great success. Um, so that's it for background. 
Uh, sorry, a few more things from background. I want to cover the mechanism of 5-FU. So it's an anti-metabolite. What that means is it interferes with the DNA replication. If you guys remember from uh, basics, uh, biology, so there's the base pairs when the DNA and the RNA replicate, and thymine is one of the, the base pairs. And so what 5-FU does is it misincorporates because it's a competitively inhibits. So it will get incorporated into the DNA because it has the same binding structure, but it will non-function. So it will replace the thymine, the thymine, but it won't function and it ultimately will cause the DNA replication to be arrested, leading to cell death. That's the mechanism. It's used in IV version, it's a chemo drug. It's used IV version for colorectal cancer and it's used in a topical version, this 5% fluorouracil cream for squamous, for sorry, for basal cell carcinoma of the skin, and most recently it's been used for OKCs. Um, the hypothesis of why we thought it should be used for OKCs actually comes from Gorlin syndrome. If you remember, Gorlin syndrome are patients that have a mutation in the patch one gene, and these patients exhibit both excessive basal cell carcinomas of the skin along with multiple OKCs. And because we know 5-fluorouracil is effective in treating basal cell carcinoma of the skin, therefore it was hypothesized that maybe it would also be similarly effective against OKCs, as it would disrupt the epithelial reproduction, the, the DNA, causing DNA damage, causing cell death, and therefore reducing recurrence after a nucleation and curatage. Um, that's it for mechanism. In terms of safety profile, it's fairly safe. So when it's used in the IV version for chemo, obviously it does have all sorts of toxic effects. But as far as we know, when it's used topically in this 5% cream form, it has almost no adverse effects from, in, the, in this case where they did 35 patients when they, they used the 5 fluorouracil, none of those patients had any adverse events. In all of the reported literature, there's only one patient that had adverse events uh, had a toxic reaction to the 5 fluorouracil, and in that case, it was they were treating um, basal cell carcinoma of the skin, and it was excessively applied on multiple occasions, and that's why the patient had toxicity. But otherwise, as far as we know, it has a really safe profile relative to liquid nitrogen or coronoids, of course. Um, all right, so inclusion, exclusion criteria. Interestingly, they excluded patients with Gorlin syndrome, and of course that makes sense because what we're primarily looking for is the recurrence rates. And when it comes to Gorlin's, these patients have multiple OKCs. So it's hard to differentiate whether it's a new cyst versus um, a recurrence. So those patients were excluded. Otherwise, they had about 70 patients, 35 in each group, which is a fairly good N. Um, they looked at patients for maybe the last seven or eight years. Um, and they, it was a retrospective, they stratified them into these two groups. About 35 were treated with modified coronoids and 35 treated with 5-fluorouracil. All patients first had a nucleation in curatage and then subsequently had peripheral astectomy. And then at that point, all patients were then between the two arms of the study were either treated with the 5-fluorouracil or the modified coronoids. Um, the way they apply the 5 fluorouracil was via ribbon gauze and the, similarly for the modified coronoid solution, which was left in place for three minutes like we discussed already. Um, and then follow up, these patients were, were serially monitored and radiographed and, and watching for resolution and bony fill and they were, they were, they were followed up for approximately two years. Um, let's get to the results because the results were really fantastic. If you look down here, recurrence, this is the 5 fluorouracil group, 0 out of 34 recurrence, which is quite remarkable, versus 9 out of 36, which is approximately 25%, which is significantly higher. Now, again, this is modified coronoids, not, not true coronoids, but still, that's a fairly high recurrence rate. Um, when you look at other findings in this study, like post-op paresthesia, it was 7 in the 5-FU group versus 9 in the modified coronary solution. That was not significantly significant, which was a little disappointing to see. It would have been nice to see that they had um, decreased paresthesia. As far as we know, 5 fluorouracil is safe on the nerve. It's not known to be neurotoxic. And I suspect that even these seven cases were probably more likely due to the nucleation than to the 5-FU. Typically, OKCs lie directly adjacent to the nerve, and so the difficult part is teasing the lesion itself off of the nerve and so I suspect maybe some of the cases of paresthesia is more likely responsibly due to the nucleation part of this procedure but it's hard to say and again with from as far as we could extrapolate from this study it wasn't any better from a nerve profile um, 5-FU versus coronoids 
Um, but again, the most important takeaway was recurrence was zero in this group. Uh, besides for that, when you compare the two groups and you compare their variables, they were pretty balanced. That's nice when you have a group of 35 in each side. Uh, in particular, look at multilocular was 9 and 12, so that was fairly balanced in both groups. And that's, of course, important because we know multilocular lesions are more likely to recur. So the fact that that was well balanced into the two groups. Um, in terms of previous recurrence, 9 in the 5 of you, if, only, if anything, that only strengthens the point that these patients had already recurred to a greater proportion than these patients, and they still, after treating with 5-FU, had zero recurrence um, when, when 5-FU was introduced. So definitely highlighting the point of how effective it is. Um, I think that's it for the results that I want to go over. Um, some important points to discuss. So the follow-up time was a little bit short. Uh, 22 months is obviously not effective, not enough. Uh, OKCs are known to recur five or even 10 years later, so obviously more time would be better. Better, but of course this is new information that's coming out to us, and I'm, I can, I, I'm sure that that Toronto will give us additional. Toronto will give us additional data as it comes out, and they'll continue following these patients. Um, the important point is that. As far as we know, for the first 22 months, this is highly effective at decreasing recurrence. Um, we know it is easier to deliver when you're comparing the other adjunctive therapies. It's safe and it's effective. And I think that's the most important points I'd like to mention. Uh, in terms of delivery, um, newer, newer delivery protocols are actually in place that instead of using the ribbon gauze, it may be slightly easier if you just leave it on gel foam, kind of like how we treat dry socket with the eugenol paste. Initially, people were putting it on, on, uh, on the ribbon gauze and bothering the patient 24 hours later to take it out, versus now you just put it in gel foam and just leave it and let it, let it dissolve and not have to bother the patient. I can tell you from personal experience, the patients will appreciate that. It's rather uncomfortable pulling this ribbon gauze out of their mouth 24 hours later. Um, and that has also been shown to not be any, just that by putting it in delivery with the gel foam is not any worse from an adverse reaction standpoint. Um, I think that's it for, for, for discussion. I'd love to hear your comments. Have you guys been using 5-FU? What has your experience been? Is this new? Is this something that you would like to try in the future? Um, anyway, thank you for joining me today and I look forward to doing this again soon.